Preston Foster, coming your way with another episode of Waterfront. This is the Cheryl Ann, the sweetest tug in the whole San Pedro Harbor. I'm John Herrick, the skipper of the Cheryl Ann. And there's my son, Jim. He's a plain clothesman on the Los Angeles Police Department. Hi, Dad. Hi, Jim. You're just in time for lunch. Mom's got lamb stew. Oh, I can't make it. I'm on a special alert. Probably go on all night. Oh, something up? I'll say, and it's pretty hot, too. Dad, you know who Alcatain is? Yeah, he's at racketeer. Racketeer? It's a mild word for him. Why, well, this guy's got a finger in half the graft in this country. What about him? Well, he jumped bail. We're sure he's going to plan to skip out of the country. Oh? The Coast Guard spotted a foreign ship lying in wait just outside the 12-mile limit. We're sure they're waiting to pick up Cantania. He's probably got enough money stashed away in some foreign country to keep half of San Pedro for life. <laughs> That's for sure. We got a tip that he's going to try to make it out to that ship in a fishing boat. So it looks like you better tell Mom I can't make it for lunch. All right. Why don't you bring Nancy and Teddy over for supper some night this week? Sure thing, Dad. All right, boy. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do about you. What have I done? Well, you've just cut into that beautiful pie I baked. Well, what's it for? It's, it's my favorite, it's lemon, it's on my table, and I'm hungry. But I didn't make it for you. I baked it for somebody else. It's not for me. That's right. Well, I'm sorry, May. I thought, well, it was right here, and it's lemon, and was there a cake sale or something at the church? No. Let's see. Holy smoke, it's our wedding anniversary. Nope. Nope. Oh, well, I knew that. Our wedding anniversary doesn't come up until, uh... Until, um... It comes up uh, around, uh... Ah, the pie was for Jonathan Beale. It's his birthday today. I'm sorry, May. I didn't mean to spoil Jonathan's birthday present. I... <laughs> it's all right. If you're genuinely sorry, I knew you wouldn't be able to resist the temptation, so I baked two. <laughs> You're the best. Tip, take care of this for me, will you? Sure. Hey, don't drop that. Mom, it skinned me alive. Why? What's in it? The pie for Jonathan Peel. Go ahead, Captain John. Any change in the work order, Herb? No, no change, Captain. You take the Cape Town trader out at 13.30, outside the breakwater, and you got plenty of time. I know. I'm shoving off early. Stopping by the lighthouse. Say hello to Jonathan for me. Right. Stand by to cast off, Sid. Cast off! Okay, Captain John. Go ahead. Sid. Just be a minute with Jonathan. Stand by the dock. Mm. 
John Herrick, what brings you out on a day like this? Don't you know we're in for a blow? How are you, cowboy? Fine, fine. Got time to come in? Just for a minute. Huh? Oh, uh, happy birthday. Happy what? It's your birthday. <laughs> what do you know? I completely forgot. Imagine you remembering well, that. Uh, don't shake it. Open it up. One of May's lemon pies, huh? Well, certainly. Why do you think I'm coming in? <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday. I hope there's many more. Excuse me while I finish winding. Got the day off, John? No. Picking up the Cape Town Trader, 1300. I don't like the look of that barometer. Yeah, it's gonna kick up all right. Hey, that's pretty good. You're getting better. Pack this sand, huh? Texas Pete. Now, now, you ought to know better than that. I've only told you a thousand times. <laughs> That's his horse cactus. Oh. You know, you got a pretty good deal here, Jonathan. Nothing to do all day but sit out here on the water and paint pictures of cowboys. Nothing to do, huh? <laughs> Let me tell you something, John. I know, I know. You have to wind that rigging a couple times a day. Yeah, and if I didn't wind it, where would you be? The light would stop turning, and you'd run your tug slap and dab up on the breakwater. Still a pretty good deal. Texas Pete, huh? There yeah, sure is. Just like the books over there in Wyoming. It's a wonderful place, Wyoming. You ever been there? Mm, no. But I'm going to go there someday, though. I'm going right over there and see all those cowboys for myself. I bet you will at that. Well, very sure well. Well, nice of me to remember my birthday. Be sure you tire that now. I will. Oh, uh, huh? here. Pick these up for you. You mean you brought me a present, too? It's not a present, just a couple of books. Texas Pete and the Bull Rock Massacre. Say, John, that must be a new one, I reckon. You read so many of those things, you're beginning to sound like Texas Pete. I reckon. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. <laughs> To clean out that cut on your head. I'll find you some dry clothes. Thanks. Hey, hey, don't you go out. I got a fistful. Hmm. Knowing how you'd yell, I wouldn't dare. Hey, thum, 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 thum. Well, as I always say, you can't steer a boat unless it's moving. Your play, dear. Hello? Dad? Jim? Yeah? You know the offshore currents better than anybody around here. I need some information about them. Currents? Yeah. A couple of bodies have been washed up. We figure it ties in with Catania. Oh. I, uh, well, I, uh, I was just uh, figuring on coming down to the dock. I'll see you down there. Sure thing. Oh, darling. This was the night you were going to play cards with me. That's what I'm doing. I'll only be down there a few minutes. Oh, for goodness sakes. The crew's aboard. They can take care of the chair land as well as you can. Mm-hmm. Oh. 
Here, no peeking. I remember exactly every card that's in that hand. Check again, son. You say the uh, fishing boat washed the shore right here, huh? Mm hmm And the two dead bodies washed up right here. Mm-hmm. And they were definitely Perez and Rinkman, huh? Oh, they were identified. And get this. In their pockets, they each had $1,000 in large bills. And, Dad, you know as well as I do that those beachcombers never had more than a dollar at a time in their lives. So Catania must have paid them off to take them off to sea under cover of night. No sign of Catania, though. Not so far. The way Lieutenant Saunders figures it, they must have run into a heavy wind and capsized. Well, the problem is now, where is Catania? There's been no sign of a third body at all. Since they weren't near enough for Catania to try to swim out of that foreign freighter. No, that's out of the question. The fishing boat washed up on these rocks between 9 and 9.15. Here's as we can get. That's a little less than an hour ago. General Lander, dispatcher. Can you read me, Herb? Come in, Captain John. What are you doing aboard this time of night? Just a little paperwork. Have you got the uh, wind velocity readings for the last hour or so? No, yeah, I got them right here. Let's see. Uh, present reading is north, northwest, 28 MP8. And 2100 hours, what was it then? Mm, let's see, it's been the same since 1900. 28 MP8. Have you got a drift reading from the Coast Guard? Huh? Mm, the 2100 report is in. It's one pound at six miles per hour. One at six. Okay, thanks, Herb. That helps a lot. Say, you going out? I don't know yet. If I do, I'll check you. Right. All right. Let's see. You figure your wind velocity and your drift allow for the tide. Then you can usually come pretty close. The way I figure, the thing should be about there. Just off Cabrillo Beach? Mm hmm. You want to go out and take a look around? Oh, I better get this information to Lieutenant Saunders. I don't want to go over his head. Well, by the time you do all that double-checking, your man might get away. I better report back. Thanks, Ted. All right. Very good coffee, Mr. Beal. My name is Jonathan Beal. Sorry, Mr. Beal. What do you say we get down to the problem? All right, Mr. Beal. You're in trouble, aren't you? Nothing I can't get out of. You ought to have a doctor for that gas you got. Uh, later, Mr. Beal. You've got no boat. Now you're sure of that. I told you before, when I want anything, I call the mainland. Uh -huh. Now, the Coast Guard will send a patrol boat out here in a minute for you if I call them. I think we can forget about the Coast Guard. Yeah, that's what I figured. Oh? Why? Well, when a man has as close a call as you just did, well, he usually wants help. That is, unless he's in trouble. OK, Mr. Beale, let's let it go at that. Only I still have to get off this rock. Tell me something. Hmm? I've been wondering ever since you washed up outside. Wondering what? How come someone like you gets in a fix? Why, you're not like the fellas in the books. <laughs> the books? Yeah. Ever read any stories of the West? Uh, the old West, I mean. I never had much time for reading. <laughs> those fellas got in plenty of trouble in those days, too. Huh? Oh, I made quite a study of them. That's so. Yes, sir. Smoke? Yeah, thank you. Of course, uh, they weren't men like you, though. Why not? Well, they were killers. <laughs> well, I don't exactly rustle cattle, Mr. Beal. Light? Hmm? Just what do you do, Mr. Catania? You know me, then. I know who you are. But between that and really knowing a man, there can be a big difference. Yeah? Yeah. 
I asked you what you do. Well, I, uh... I run a business, Mr. Beale. Big business. Lots of money, lots of work, lots of headaches. Yeah, uh, you know, I was watching you while you were drinking your coffee. Uh -huh. Seems to me, a man like you could have been just about anything. Successful, lots of money, a good job, uh, uh, just about anything. <laughs> I am successful, Mr. Beale, and I've got a lot of money. Yeah, doesn't seem to do you much good when you want to escape from the law. Positive nobody's up there? Why don't you take a look around and see for yourself? Thanks, I think I will. You're real nice, Mr. Beale. I don't want to get tough with you. You all right? Yeah, I guess so. I don't like to get rough. Don't make me do it again. Funny. Funny? I was thinking of all the men who who tried to cross me. Big men, too. Were they? And have someone like you try it. You paint this? Yeah. Let me see. That one, too? Yeah, both of them. Something about this one I like. Only it seems to me that you didn't catch enough sunlight on the water. Look. There's so few clouds that would make it stronger, wouldn't it? It'd make the white caps come almost alive. Yeah, well, it's been finished yet. You know, well, it'll be better if you get more sunlight on the water. You know what it lacks? Highlights. Hmm. Hmm. I'll get it. Some morning early when the sun's coming up over those rocks. Yeah. Mr. Beale, I need a boat to get me out to sea. I like your painting. I want to buy it. It's not for sale. Mr. Beale, you're quite a man. Mr. Catania, are you in so deep now that there's nothing you can do? Not now, Mr. Beale. Once, maybe. Not now. Crazy. Get that light turning. You're pretty smart, aren't you? You know the Coast Guard will see something wrong out here if this light isn't turning. Now get it going, you hear? Now! Where's the crank? Where's the crank? Don't dumb me up on me, old man, or so help me, I'll cheer you. Hey! 
get that light turned. There's only one way that can be done now. You'll have to turn it by hand all night until dawn. Sure been carving circles on the water, Captain. Any luck? Not a thing, Tip. See anything off the stern? Nope. You want Billy to bring you up some coffee? No, thanks. See something, Captain? Jonathan's light stopped turning. Oh, there it goes. Turning again. I guess we might as well start back. That light's supposed to make a complete revolution every 15 seconds. What? It's turning three times that fast. Take over, Tip. Gerald and the dispatcher. Go ahead, Captain John. I'm putting it at the lighthouse. Something's wrong. Tell Jim to get the harbor patrol. Over. Thanks. Jonathan. Jonathan. Catania. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, sure. You stay here. does need some highlights. I'll fix it. Cheryl Ann to dispatcher. Can you read me, Herb? Come in, Captain John. Hey, did Jim find you? Yeah, he's on his way in, in the patrol boat. Your wife's been calling. She sounds kind of worried. Call her for me, will you, Herb? Tell her everything's... Oh, wait a minute, Captain. She's here now. She just came in. She is? Put her on. Mom? Yes, dear. Mom, I'm all okay, and I love you very much. Me too. Oh, Mom, just remember, I know exactly what cards were in my hand. Well... A man who can remember every card in his hand certainly ought to be able to remember his anniversary. Yes, dear. Well, we hope you enjoyed tonight's story and that you'll be with us next week for another episode of Waterfront. Mm -hmm.